Hello, and welcome to the Daily Bible Podcast with Trisha and Michelle. We're just two friends reading through the Bible chronologically and encouraging you to do the same. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook, Daily Bible Podcast, or go to our website, dailybiblepodcast.net. We are going through the one-year chronological Bible, and we have links for that in our show notes and also at our website. We also have a Facebook group. Just look for Daily Bible Podcast under groups. Also, click subscribe. If you are in any type of podcast app, click subscribe. That just helps you receive notifications. So you can remember like, oh, yeah, I'm reading through the Bible this year. Um, And then share it with a friend. You know, we are 80% more likely to follow through with a goal if we have a friend doing it with us. I heard Mm -hmm. that somewhere. I cannot tell you where I heard that, but it makes sense because it does make sense. Like we kept going and we read through the whole Bible and we did, we recorded 365 podcasts because we have each other. If I was doing it by myself, I probably would have stopped in Job somewhere. There is something about accountability. There is just so, that's just so, so right. There is something about accountability that keeps us going because I don't want to disappoint you and Um, also when you're checking in on me, I'm like, oh yeah, I got to do that. I got to do that. Yeah. I'll get that done. I'll get that done. Okay. Okay. So today we are reading Genesis seven, Genesis eight, Genesis nine, and Genesis 10 verses one through five. Then we flip over to first Chronicles one verses five through seven, then back to Genesis 10 verses six through 20, then back to first Chronicles one verses eight through 16, and then back to Genesis 10 verses 21 through 30. Are you kind of getting some whiplash Mm -hmm. here? And then over, then back to first Chronicles one verses 17 verses 17 through 23. And then um, finally we ended with two verses in Genesis 10 verses 31 and 32. Now, remember we are reading the historical timeline of, of the Bible. We are reading it chronologically, so that's why we are jumping from Genesis to 1 Chronicles and then back to Genesis. Yes. Okay, so Genesis 7, God instructs Noah to enter the ark. So he's built this huge ark, and so he says, take your family, go inside with pairs of all living creatures because there's a flood coming, and Noah was 600 by then, and he (laughs) obeys God's command. Yeah. He's strong enough to build this ark at 600. I think they were like super bodies back then because they were yep. pretty fresh. They were yep. fresh and new. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they yeah, kind of broke, broken down over time. Um, so they enter the ark and God seals them in. I love that. Like he pushes it shut. He makes sure they're all tucked in there. So he built it in. The floodwaters come. They cover the earth for 40 days, submerging all the land. And they destroy every living thing that was not in the ark. And it's so interesting. Like we live by Glacier National Park. Up on the top, there was like, sea creature fossils we were in the austrian alps top of the alps we were in a salt mine sea creature fossils like the whole Mm. earth the whole earth the alps like every everything was covered with water um and water was on the earth for 150 days so in genesis 8 god remembers noah not that he forgot him but he's like okay now this is the time and he remembers he's in there with the animals and he causes a wind to pass over the earth, making the flood of waters recede. And it comes to rest on Mount Arat. And Noah's waiting for the earth to dry. And he sends out different birds. And finally, when one comes back, a dove comes back with an, with an olive branch. God is telling Noah that it's time. The earth is dry enough. They can start going back on the earth. And then in Genesis 9, God blesses Noah and his sons, telling them to be fruitful and multiply. This is a repeat. Remember mm-hmm. from the beginning of the first dialogue, God says, be fruitful and multiply. Now they're starting over. Everyone else is gone. They've been wiped out. God establishes a covenant with Noah and his descendants, promising never to flood the earth again. The rainbow is the sign of this covenant. And it's awesome. But things do not stay bright and colorful. Noah plants a vineyard and he becomes drunk. And he is laying naked, uncovered in his tent. And his son Ham sees his nakedness and goes and tells his brothers. The brothers respectfully cover their father without looking at him. So when Noah learns what Ham did, he curses Ham's son Canaan. Now, this name is going to pop up a lot Mm -hmm. in our reading, Canaan. 
while Noah blesses the other sons of Shem and Japheth. And the chapter concludes with the death of Noah at 950 years, and Ham disrespected his father in his moment of nakedness, but and so that's why Ham's son Canaan was cursed, and Shem and Japheth respected him and covered him. So Noah's response comes in the form of a poem where Cain is, Cain is cursed and Shem and Japheth mm-hmm. are blessed. So this is some poetry woven in here mm-hmm. in this chapter. And then the, you know, we could go on. It tells about where these people ended up being. But we do see that kingdoms were built. Cush built Babylon and Nineveh. Hmm. That's the descendants of Ooh. Ham. That was the disrespectful one. We're seeing this lineage kind of being disrespectful growing to be evil um for other descendants include the philistines and the hittites for which are enemies of god's people going forward and then um shem's descendants included a guy named peleg which means division and during peleg's lifetime the world's people were divided which will happen tomorrow in genesis 11 so much set up there is a lot of setup there really is and and there is so much set up and yet there is it's still like the storyline just keeps building and building and building. I mean, we're only day three and the storyline for the Bible is, is already like building in crazy ways. Just think about all the years that have passed. Think about after the flood. Uh, I, I went to the ark earlier this year and um, the ark in Kentucky that is. And I watched a video there about what life would have could have been like after the flood and rebuilding civilization, that was not easy. That, that had to have been hard um, to rebuild civilization. But I, I wanted to say, I'm thankful for reading the Bible chronologically because for the last couple of days, we've been flipping from first Chronicles one to see the, these genealogies. And, you know, I just, um, I want to spend some time right now encourage and encourage the person having a hard time reading all of these hard to pronounce names. Just remember, every word in the Bible is God's word, and it is precious. Mm -hmm. And my first few times reading through these genealogies were not fun, but there are things that will pop to the surface for me now. And each time that I read them, I'm praying, God, show me something new. And um, and this time I picked up on Nimrod being a mighty man, the first mighty man. He was a hunter before the Lord, but but he was he wasn't necessarily known in a good way. Even though he was a hunter before the Lord, he wasn't necessarily known in a good way. He built his kingdom in the land of Babylonia, which includes the cities of Nineveh and Babylon. And these cities will be very important in the future. Mm -hmm. And as um, James Montgomery Boyce, who is an author and theologian, he has said, he was a hunter of men, a warrior. It was though his ability to fight and kill and rule ruthlessly that his kingdom of the Euphrates Valley city states was consolidated. So another reason why genealogies are important. We can see that that initial ham being disrespectful of his father, that disrespectful nature has just continued. And mm-hmm. all these enemies we're going to be reading about through the yeah. rest of the Old Testament were from that lineage. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. It like, is amazing. Martin Luther once said, one must consider this chapter of Genesis as a mirror in which to discern what we human beings are, namely creatures so marred by sin. So going back to what you just said, Trisha, mainly that we are creatures so marred by sin that we have no knowledge of our own origin, not even of God himself, our creator, unless the word of God reveals these sparks of divine light to us from afar. This knowledge this knowledge of the Holy Scriptures reveals to us those who are without them live in error, uncertainty, and boundless ungodliness, for they have no knowledge about who they are and whence they came. That seed is in there, and we yeah. may not fully understand it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It definitely is. Well, we need to take a break here and hear from our sponsor, but when we come back, we'll have the word of the day. Stay tuned.
The word of the day is respect. Respect means esteem, admire, and look back at with regard. So the repercussions of sin often stem from a lack of respect. Initially, I grappled with why would Noah curse Canaan for Ham's disrespect? But the more I studied it, the more it made sense. So respect, like disrespect, is a behavior that can be modeled or imitated by our children. They learn from what they observe, don't they? Mm. Like they follow what we do, which mm. I, sometimes I'll see my kids. I'm like, oh my goodness, <laughs> like they picked that up. All right. Um, and so going back to BibleHub.com, thinking about the commentaries and as reading through them, it I learned about just those characteristics of Noah's sin continued. Like we were saying before, Ham's mm. disrespect caused strife, whereas the elder two sons showed reverence and care for their father in his vulnerable moment. And this incident serves as a prophetic foreshadowing, especially concerning the proximity to the later site of the Tower of Babel built by Ham's descendants. So we just see that this lineage, just a lot of trouble comes from this lineage. Our life decisions have ramifications that extend beyond our immediate circumstances. They influence generations. And that's a sobering thought Mm -hmm. that our negative traits can be inherited and amplified, passed on. But there's a silver lining, Michelle, don't worry. Um, Just as negative traits can be passed down, so can positive ones. And it's something we see in the upcoming readings about Abram. So Abraham, while imperfect, endeavored to seek and follow God. And this gives me pause as a parent, knowing that my action will influence future generations. It makes me more conscientious Mm. of my choices. The decisions made by Shem and Ham and Japheth were ultimately their own. Like no one forced them to do those things, but they still, if they see certain things modeled, that's what children tend to follow. So we can guide our children, but we cannot guarantee outcomes, but we can influence them greatly by the right things that we choose. So am I modeling respect for my children? Philippians 2, 4 through 5 says, don't look only, don't look out only for your interests, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. So thankfully, when everything was going wrong, God intervened. God, we're going to find out, inspired, called away a man called Terah. And that profoundly impacted his son, Abram. So everything we do will impact our kids. And so when we're looking out, not just for our own interests, what's easy for us, but the interests in others, mm. our kids, people in our Bible study, people that we mentor, our neighbors, we can point them in the right direction. We can lead them in the right direction. We can be an influence. We can model the right things and that will greatly impact future generations. Mm-hmm. You're so right. And, you know, my my mind, as we're talking about respect, as we're thinking about the term respect, my mind goes to my parents. And the older I get, the more I realize what they did for me and are still doing for me. And, um, and, and so I know that I might be a little bit slow to the game, but I never had kids to really understand, oh, This is what my parents gave up for me. This is what they sacrificed for me. So I I never, I never got, got it like fully understood um, all that they have done for me until I, you know, maybe I'm slow to the game um, until I, I, well, about now. And I'm like, just, they have sacrificed so Mm -hmm. much Mm -hmm. for me. And it's like, am I fully respecting them the way that I should be respecting Mm -hmm. them? Mm -hmm. Because um, their love knows no bounds. And they teach me the more I, the more I get to know my parents. And yes, I know I've been on this earth a long time and I should know them, but the deeper my relationship goes with my parents, the more I understand the love of God. And the more I understand and respect God, because Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm learning them and I'm like, oh, they love me so much and they continue to love me. I continue to flub up. I continue to do things that, that could easily mar parts of that relationship and they continue to love me. Mm -hmm. And that's the same way with God. And, um, and so I'm just, you know, I guess 
just as we're talking today, I'm thinking through my respect for my parents, yeah. but also my respect for God. And what does that look like? Like, how am I showing that to others? And maybe you don't come from parents that have made good choices. That's true. Um, maybe listeners out there just like, I want to do things differently. Look for people in your life that could be a good influence, that mm-hmm. could be um, just Christian books. Catherine Marshall, Corey Tim Boone, I've read their books. I've learned from them. Um, we can learn respect, even if it wasn't modeled for us. So, you know, maybe you're a first generation Christ follower. Maybe you're just trying to figure this whole thing out yourself. So look for people that can uh, be a good leader and mentor and teach you, teach you what it is to respect others and to love others and to care for others. And we're going to be, as we're going through the Bible, learning about what that looks like. We're going to see people that are respecting God. We're going to see people that are disrespecting God, people with soft hearts and people with very hard hearts. And those are all examples for us. Um, you know, if I were to write a story about myself and my family, I wouldn't put up all the mistakes that I just realized <laughs> have. There's like mistake after mistake after mistake. But it's to show us that no one gets it right all the time, but we can learn and we can grow. Yeah, that's so true. That's so true. Well, Trisha, will you pray for us today as we go about our day, just as we ponder respect and ponder what we've learned in God's word? Mm-hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much that right here from the beginning, we learn about respect and we learn the impact that it has on generations. As we continue to read, Lord, we're going to see how those roots of disrespect led to very, very evil people. Um, and then I pray that you will, you will just root out the disrespect in our lives. Just point it out to us, Lord. Do it gently, but show us the areas of disrespect maybe we have for others, maybe in a certain attitude, maybe the way we talk to people or look down on certain people. Lord, I pray that we will have respect for others. I pray that we have respect for you because when we respect you, when we truly respect you, Lord, we will lean in to learn. We will open our hearts. We will ask you to change us, Lord. I pray that as we respect you and as we study your word, that you will help us to grow into the men and the women that you desire us to be. And I thank you for your word. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we are sending you off with some daily encouragement to get into the word and be the hands and feet of Jesus. And friends, I just want to remind you that we are at the beginning of an incredible journey. And I'm so glad that you are joining Trisha and myself. This is some good stuff. And we are reading about the foundation of the world. And we're learning about God and we're learning about ourselves and as we see through his lens. And so um, just keep up that good work. Hey, tomorrow we are reading Genesis 11, 1 through 26. And then we're moving on to 1 Chronicles 1, verses 24 through 27. Then back to Genesis, Genesis 11, verses 27 through 31. Then Genesis 12, Genesis 13, and Genesis 14. You know, you wouldn't be listening to a daily Bible podcast without the partnership of Life Audio. You need to go to Life Audio. You need to check them out. They have got some great podcasts, Christian podcasts that have been created just for you. Go to lifeaudio.com. And we will see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye.